So we've gone over algebraic equations and proofs in geometry and you know how to take a square root and figure out areas and circumference, so I figured you've got math down cold. Well, I'm glad you're so confident. Hey, you are going to ace that high school equivalency test, I can tell. Except in English. Okay, so we have to work on your reading and vocabulary, but that's not so bad. We're getting there. You're going to get that diploma. Ian's going to be pretty proud of me, huh? Right. Go away, we're closed. Better open up, Carly. I'm going to call the police. call the cops because I won't open the door. I'm the one who should call the cops because you're trespassing. Oh, yeah? On what? We're working, okay? And you're interrupting. Oh, you're working? Really? On what? Oh, the rhyme of the ancient mariner. What is this, junior high study hall? None of your business. You know, I didn't know your boyfriend was into reading poetry. This must be some really romantic reading. Oh, here we go. Her lips were red. Her looks were free. Her locks were yellow as gold. Her skin was white as leprosy. That kind of sounds like you, Harley. Like the lady said, it's none of your business. You know, every time I turn around, you two are together. Does Sam know about this meeting of the great minds? Al Michael, is there some reason that you chose to drop by? Other than to show off what a total jerk you are, I mean. Yeah, there is. What? I want my running sneakers back. Your running sneakers? Yeah, the ones you stole when you and your ex-con boyfriend broke into my apartment. Uh -huh. Oh, by the way, if you want to go back to jail, that's a r real good way to do it. Stop, stop, stop it, stop it, please. Please don't do this. Please. What? Hey, he's a great guy. Does he do everything you tell him? Like breaking and entering? and two-timing Sam. We're friends, okay? And when a friend needs help, he... What are you doing? Where are you going? Out. What? Oh, you're gonna leave me alone with this maniac? That's right, Harley. Just now, I almost broke a promise to Sam, and I'm not gonna do that. Well, what promise? We decided that we were gonna stay out of your and his business. Hmm. What are you laughing? 
laughing at. Oh, I look, I'm I'm really sorry that I that I broke up your evening. Yeah, you should be. He he seems real devoted to you though. Oh. Is there something on your tiny little brain, Alan Michael? Oh, I'm not the one with brains. Dylan is. If he's smart enough to stay away from somebody like you. Okay, so then why didn't you just take that settlement that my lawyer offered you, and you'd be free of me forever, and we could both go on with our lives? Yeah, and you could get on with spending my money, right? Do you think my money is going to buy you a true blue boyfriend? Well, you've got another thing coming. You are not going no, to get a penny. So, uh, you better get used to eating on the floor like this, all right? Uh, you know, you should be lucky if you could get... A bum off the street to pay attention to you. Do you realize that? Here, take your sneaker and get out of my store. Sure, my pleasure. Well, I hope the rest of your evening is as exciting as this has been. I know mine's going to be. Bye. What? Hello? Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Yeah. Yeah, I can hardly wait. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Well, 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 Alan Michael. Yes, I know that my evening is going to be exciting. And I also know that yours will be more exciting than you had bargained for, Pumpkin. Glad that you're here. I was so scared somebody is here. Do you, you believe me? Just and they left, this, they left this package in the doll table. It was already broken. And then Johnny. I saw all this fan mail from that fan. And the face picture was my, my face. Johnny, okay. And I came here to work, Johnny. I promised that I did. And I was in her office. And I was looking for a pen. And I went to your desk to look. I didn't mean to look at your stuff. I, I promised. Now I know why you've been acting the way that you had. Keeping secrets. Johnny, I was so stupid no, to treat no, you that way. I'm I was so stupid. Sorry. I was stupid for not warning you. Scared. Wants to be so scared. Listen, whoever it was is gone. Oh, they I checked everywhere. They left a gift. Yeah, well, they got a great sense of humor. Oh, right? I don't think it's funny at all, Frank. All right, don't worry about it. Take it easy, okay? I'll check it for fingerprints and I'll find out exactly where this doll came from. I guess I'm lucky that you guys came when you did, huh? Well, I just didn't show up, Chelsea. We were looking for you. That's best. Well, take it easy here. You're trembling, all right? I'm, I'm just a little shook up, that's all. Johnny, why don't I take her out for a glass of water, all right? And that way you can stay here in case our little friend comes back. All right. And then that way I can call uh, Holly and Ross. Holly and Ross? Holly hired Frank to find out who was behind us after I convinced her it wasn't a joke. Johnny, I'm so sorry that I treated you that yeah, way, yeah, Holly. Well, you just, you just go let Frank take care of you and uh, we'll kiss and make up later, all right? All right. I love you. Take it easy. Who's calling? Is this the person who dropped off the president at WSPR tonight? We can get together and talk if you like. Any place, any time, you name it. How's that sound? Johnny, don't touch that. I don't want your fingerprints on it, too. The phone just rang, and somebody was there. Really? They wouldn't talk. They just laughed. Uh, well, here we go. Oh, Frank, what kind of person would do something like this? I don't know, but we're going to find out. We sure as hell better. Keep acting. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, come on. Mmm. What's good? Mm. Tasty. Just a little bit more cayenne. Oh, hey, hey. Uh -huh. Stuff about to melt the acrylic in my paintings and you want it hotter. You like it hot. <laughs> oh, honey, the hotter the uh, You might have me. Yes, ma'am. Like playing with fire. Hi. Hi. Mindy. 
Mindy, I'm kind of waiting for somebody, so... Uh... Oh, don't mind me. I'll just be... Dinner is served. Now, look, these are the figures I was telling you about. And uh, it shows that, that this could be the time to bring in a new audience participation show in the syndication market because all these old shows are trying to lose rating points. Mm -hmm. So those stations are just waiting for something to bring their audience back. What are you doing? I'm eating my rib. Why? With a knife and a fork? Ross, don't you think you are taking this courtroom decor and saying it's a little too far? I mean, maybe it's time for you to loosen up a little bit. At least I don't have barbecue sauce dribbling off my lip. No, I don't. Do yeah. I? Allow me. Yo, you're wrong. Yes. Phone call for you, man. It is Lionel. He says it's important, man. Oh, pardon me. Believe me. <laughs> yes. Would you like to tell me what exactly is going on? It's rib night at the heartbreak. You know what I'm talking about. What's going on with Daddy? Well, it looks to me like he's trying to have himself a good time. Obviously. Yeah. Well, maybe we should call Vanessa and see if she wants to have a good time. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Vanessa's already been here and she left. Why? Did something happen between her and Daddy? Well, I think your dad's a little sensitive about what happened with the Saudi Arabia thing. Oh, you know, that damn oil deal? Right. I don't know. You know, I'm not really so unhappy about uh, Vanessa taking that deal out from under him. It's not that she took the deal. It's how she took the deal from him. I know. So what happened when she came in? Did he insult her? No, 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 no. He just wasn't expecting her. You know, you know your daddy. He's in here clowning around, having Miss a good... Nadine. Well, yeah, she just happened to be here. Putting the moves on him, right? Actually, he was the one putting all the moves on him. What? Well, what, didn't he stop when he saw Vanessa? Vanessa didn't give him much chance to stop. Look, your dad was in the back playing food, right? So he comes around this corner and he's carrying Van Nadine in his oh, arms. Oh, my gosh, I can just see it. Right, and Vanessa saw it. As soon as she saw it, she turned around she took off. Why? Why did he have to do this? Wait a minute. I mean, let me tell you something about your dad. You see, he likes to have a good time. And sometimes when he's really hurting inside, that's the only way he knows how to cover it up. Maybe you okay? What am I doing here, Rick? Would you mind telling me? I was wondering the same thing myself. All right, pack it up. We're gonna go. Why? What's up? Frank called my office. Frank's at WSPR. He wants us over there right away. What happened? Well, I don't know. Let's we'll find out. What's Frank doing at the studio? Oh, no, we're gonna find out when we get there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I know I'm late. I, I'm sorry. I have a good excuse. You're, you're late, Doc. Us? Oh no, no. I'm sorry. I just ha I hate being late. You know, I rented this very romantic Cary Grant film so that we could sit back and relax and enjoy the evening, not wear out the carpet. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'm just so wound up. I shouldn't have come tonight. I'm no use to anyone. Have you talked to your dad lately? No, and I don't intend to. He's made it very clear that I'm not a part of his grand plan for the future, and that's fine with me. Well, have you talked to your mother about the way your father's treating you? What good would that do? I'm on my own now, Gary. I'm through running to my parents for help. Or anyone else for that matter. Oh, Blake. It's gonna be all right. I promise you, in the long run, it is going to be all right. I'm a big girl now, Gary. I don't need to be treated like a two-year-old who skinned her knee, and I don't need your sympathy. Wait. This is me, remember? The one person you can be honest with. I'm sorry. I'm... I shouldn't have come. I'm going to go home. Oh, no, 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 no! You are going to come right back here, and you're going to sit down, and I am going to go get us something to eat. What would you like? I don't care. Okay. I'll surprise you. But I don't want you to going anywhere. I want you to stay right there. I don't want you going out there all alone. I'll be right back.
kill it. Okay, Beth. All right, now just calm down for a second and try to remember how you got out here. Did you come out here with somebody? You did. Did somebody, you, somebody forced you to come out here, didn't they? Was it Blackburn? Blackburn is the man that took you from the museum. The last time that we saw you, you remember? You... You shot... Right, he shot me. That's right. Is, is that what you're remembering right now? Or are you remembering something else? I you. You won't let him what? You won't let him what? What does he want to do to you? Come on. Is there someone else? Oh, you've got to stop this. We never, we never, may never get her What's back. What's the matter, Neil? What's the matter? She's seeing something you don't want her to see? Something you don't want us to know? I don't care what she's thinking about. I, I don't know. All I want is Beth back. Right, Mrs. On. Reigns, come on. Come on, Beth. Can't come you see on, that? Come on. You've got to help us here. We can't do this without you. You've got to help us to understand. Now, stay there. Come on. No! All right, what's happening? Somebody attacking you? No, 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 don't nod to me. Tell me. Come on, tell me. Come on. Come on, let's stay there. center on the newsstand. Now get this. Ready for this? Spalding Mansion, where Harley Cooper, modern-day Cinderella, and Alan Michael Spalding, American royalty, were married in a fairy tale wedding almost a year ago, and here is Harley today. Gone from riches back to rags. And here she is, sprawled on the very spot on Fifth Street, where her ungrateful, snobby husband tossed her out of his life. This is great. I don't believe it. <laughs> this is great. It's horrible. <laughs> what a little witch. What are, you, what are you talking about? A Spalding get some dirt thrown in his face? One would think you'd be thrilled. I have got to show this to Alan Michael before somebody else does. Oh, come on. Let him get a little dirty. His family's going to console him. Gary, he's my friend. He needs me. Oh. And I thought you were buttering him up for business sake. How stupid of me. Gary, I'm sorry. I know you were trying to cheer me up this evening. Among other things. But don't you see, Alan Michael is one of the few people that I actually might be able to help. Yeah, I do see. You're just a real regular Mother Teresa, aren't you? Come on. Try to understand. If I can make Alan Michael feel better, then maybe... Okay. Go. Really, go ahead. And I do understand. Tend to your downtrodden. Hey, we got quite an assembly line going here. We make a hell of a team. I think we can enter one of those international rib fixings. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Nate. I have got to run down to the newsstand for just one minute. I will be right back. Oh, Mindy, honey, you want to take my place? Come on. Go ahead. Here, I won't be gone for long. I promise. Yeah. How about tomorrow night you and I go out and this town up? It's a little hard to get down with the kids. Well, you, Mr. Lewis. Good, 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 good. Daddy? Yes, my darling daughter, what can I do for you? I am a little bit worried about you. You are? Yes, I know that Vanessa really hurt you when you were in the... Ah, no, 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 no. No, Vanessa is water under the bridge. But it doesn't mean that you have to just go and pick up on just anybody. Are we talking about Ms. Cooper? Yes, I mean, she's a perfectly nice woman. Yes, yes, she is. And she has a, no ifs, ands, or buts about her. And she's not running a corporation on the side. She's a lady who knows how to have a good time. But we both know that you are on the rebound. Darling, I'm just looking to have a little fun. Yeah, what's wrong with a little fun? I mean, they say the only way to get over a woman is by uh, taking time. Seems to me 
kind of takes a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just go out and get yourself another woman and start having fun right away. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> Dylan, if you don't mind, this is between my daddy and me. Your daddy? I'm sorry, I didn't. Look, why don't both of you just butt it? Fine. It's your butt, not mine. <laughs> I came in, so I wasn't here. Great. Kana, I'm absolutely positive I haven't been praying. You know, why would families can gonna be so complicated? I just wonder why we have to belong to them. G girls, it's been a great visit, but I'm really expecting somebody. You know, it'd be great. It'd be great if we could just divorce our families. You know, because they, they want to give you advice about your life, but they will not take it. any advice about theirs. I'm sorry if I was out of line. Oh, hey, you weren't out of line at all. As a matter of fact, I liked your advice a whole hell of a lot more than I liked you. Well, I don't think either one of us has the right to give you advice. Yeah, but that never stopped Mindy before. <laughs> Look, tell me something. You, you don't mind that Nadine is Harley's mom, do you? Well, man, why should I? I mean, she's not just Harley's mom. You know? Now, I know that she left her family when Harley's little baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I know that, but, but she's, she's here now, and that's what's important. You know, I think she's probably paid twice over. Her man and her kids, and uh, I don't think she's really have to pay much more. Well, do you? I know, man. I'm with you. Oh, could you believe I had car trouble? My carburetor started choking and coughing. Is this our table? Yeah, the women that wouldn't leave. Hey, pull up a chair and join us. Um, waiter, we need more ribs. You are too, too kind. Hey, was my boy reading poetry? Would Sammy turn you on to this stuff? No, it's just a little high hey, school. there you are. Why did you run out of me like that? Now, he hasn't hurt you yet. Why can't you talk? Are you so afraid that you can't speak? Is that what it is? Come on. Come on, Beth. Now, damn it, you gotta try and tell me what happened. She can't! Yes, she can. Right? No, she can. Just leave her alone. Whatever happened isn't over yet. Now, come on. Now, you raise the oar over your head. Then what happened? Come on, Beth. Don't give up on me. Come on. You can talk. You can do it. Now, tell me what happened. Demon Beth, tell me what the hell happened. <laughs> Him. <laughs> You're looking for your mom. She just went out to the newsstand a few minutes ago. I think she'll be right back. Okay, thanks. Yeah, well, uh, I think I'll get back to the ribs. I, that's okay, Dylan. Look, things slowed up a little bit. Why don't you just, uh, she give Harley some uh, ribs. You want some? No, I don't want some ribs. Some friend you are. Are you in the habit of cutting out on your friends when they're in trouble? I'm glad I wasn't jumped by a motorcycle gang. I would have had my throat Harley, split. I am your friend, and I always will be. Friends don't cut out on friends. Especially when they're in trouble. Look, I told you. Yeah, I'm not you gonna told get... me. You and Sam don't want to get involved. You and Ellen and Michael got a lot of things to work out, Harley. Sam and... Sam and I decided that we're not going to get in the middle of it anymore. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a pretty good attitude, friend, considering you and Sam had so much to do with starting all the problems well, in the first place. I'm sorry you feel that. Hey, spare me your kind words. So, Dr. Bauer, do you have trouble with intimacy? I notice every time we get together, it's always a crowd scene. Believe me, I've dropped some huge hints. Yeah, but you're too nice. I mean, no one believes that you want to talk them out. Ray, I've been shopping and shopping, you know, for a gift for Chelsea for the shower you're giving her. And I just can't figure out what to get her. Oh, Dana, um, anything. Dishes, towels. Well, towels are so impersonal, you know. Monogram towels. I know I should be able to go out and find hundreds of things to buy, but I want to get her something really special, you know, because she's so perfect. She's so vivacious, so alive, so... Am I talking too much? No, no. I, you could do really good impressions. Frank was supposed to meet me here. 
What do you think happened to him? Do you think he stood me up? Listen, I think the first thing we should do is beef up security around here. I agree. Yeah. And Chelsea now knows that she shouldn't come here alone at night, but that's not going to stop some kook from showing up during the day. Oh, I'm sure glad we're not doing this in front of a live audience anymore. Uh, that's another thing, too. I need some back tapes of when the show was live to see if there was a fan that kept showing up. Oh, right. Okay, first thing tomorrow morning. Okay. Well, do you think anyone followed you over here? No, I think whoever left the package saw Bozy leave and had no idea anyone was here until they heard me call out. You know, when I first heard the footsteps, I thought that, that maybe they were after me. But now that I think about it, they were probably trying to get away. And then the next set of footsteps must have been you and Frank Chump coming to find me. What mainly worries me is the fact that that person showed up here. Now, that's a far cry from making phone calls and sending letters. Yes, it would have been a lot easier to send that box through the mail. Yeah, but then why do it in person? I mean... I have to admit that at first I was really scared, but now that it's all over with, I mean, I realize that I wasn't in that much danger. I mean, people who call, send letters, or even deliver packages, they don't really want to hurt people, right? Listen, I've been doing some reading about fans obsessed with celebrities, okay? And the first thing they do is they convince themselves that the object of their obsessions is returning their feelings. And the second thing they do is they convince themselves that the people around the celebrity, like their family or friends, it keeps them from being together. In other words, Chelsea's the enemy. Exactly. But there's one more thing. If that fan chooses to act out on their obsession, yeah, they'll strike out at whomever they think is standing in their way. Exactly. So, we could be in big trouble here. Yes, we could be. Your daughter's watching you like a hawk over there. Don't I know it? Mm. Well, maybe she's just used to seeing you act reckless, and maybe she knows you're still upset about Vanessa. Oh, am I? Yeah, and I think you're afraid to admit it to yourself. Huh? Well, there's always the possibility that she's just genuinely concerned about her daddy. Look, many Mrs. Rust, uh, whenever Minnie gets lonely, she starts meddling. Now, why don't you go out there and concentrate on improving her love life? <laughs> Mindy? 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 Have you, have you bought Chelsea or Cheryl gift yet? No, Chelsea's sort of hard to shop for. You find it hard to shop? <laughs> I will probably buy her five or six, six things and then take some of them back. Maybe. But I'm sure that she'll like whatever you give her. Chelsea's like that. She likes anything you give her. You want to dance? Sure, the four of us can make a great conga line. <laughs> Ray, I'll go on a day next week. It'll just be the two of us. It'll be romantic, it'll be special. Okay. How about Friday night? Well, I mean, aren't, you, uh, aren't you hosting Chelsea's uh, shower party? Yeah, but we're liberated women. Men are invited. I want it just to be the two of us. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. We're kind of getting turned on by group dates. But, Ray, I just... Oh. <laughs> when? 7.30 p.m. Where? Your lighthouse? Harley. <laughs> I don't want you mad at me. I'm not. Yeah, I can tell. Look. Right now, I need my friends more than ever. I mean, what kind of a friend just walks out on someone when they need them the most? I, I understand, Harley, but you and Alan Michael, you just make it... You make it pretty unpleasant sometimes. Well, it's unpleasant for me, too. I know. But it's hard for guys to just stand there and watch without getting involved. Fine. Just stay uninvolved. Oh, Harley, look, what I'm trying to say... You and Al, what you got, you and Al Michael, that's private. It's nobody else's business. Blake, Hi. how you doing? Come on in. Come on in. I, I'm fine. How, how are you? Oh, that. Oh, that's my laundry. Ah. <laughs> Were you on your way to the laundromat? No, actually, I, I just got back. It's weird, though. Everything is so wrinkled. And I set the machine on permanent press. To tell you the truth, it doesn't work very well. Oh, uh, Michael, you didn't happen to see a magazine or a newspaper while you were out, did you? Uh, no. No, why? Well... I wanted to show you this so 
you wouldn't find out some other way. Yeah? What is it? What the hell is this? Who would do something like I this? I think only Harley could have. You know, that is just like her. To stoop as low as she possibly can. I guess this is her idea of getting even. Really? Even for what? I mean, you think she'd be a little bit more grateful to Aunt Alex and to Philip, if not me. And she'd think that maybe there are other people's feelings involved other than mine. You know, I know. sometimes it's hard to believe that I actually thought she was something more than just a money-hungry little... Oh, this is good. That's real nice. Cinderella's wedding. That's a nice touch, Harley. You know something? She really had me fooled. I thought she married me because she loved me. Oh, and Michael, she did. You know something? We used to go out and buy this rag together and sit in bed and read it and read about everybody else's little scandals. And we'd laugh because it was the funniest thing going. Not very funny when it's about you. Tell me something. Do you think that she did this to get what she wants out of the divorce? Or do, or do you honestly believe that she believes what is written in this thing? I don't know. You know, you can tell yourself over and over again that you're not going to let this get to you. But the truth is, divorce hurts a lot. me down on the floor and he, he pointed a gun at me and he told me to be quiet and he, he left I couldn't see anything he came back in and he had a he had a bag of clothes and he undressed me pull out a uniform. And he was staring at me. And, uh, and he left. And I... I tried to get away. He came back in and he, he untied me and, and he said the boat was ready and we had to go. And I said, I said, leave me. I said, you, you can get away. You, you, you can get away faster without me. And, and, and I, I thought, I thought he was, was going to do it. And then he, then he turned around and he, it was different. It was colder. And he said he might be willing to let me stay if I would pay. I said I can't pay. And he said, yeah, I can. Said I it was pretty and I had long blonde hair. And he like pretty girls with long blonde hair. And I knew what that meant. Because I'd heard that before. And I, 
he started coming at me, and I knew I couldn't let him do that. You know, I couldn't. I had. I had to stop him. You know. Of course you did. Of course you did. He made me feel dirty. Like before. And I hated him for that. And I wanted him to die. You see? Anybody would have wanted to die then. Then something to me took over. It was like something I don't know. It made me strong. It made me sick. I, I couldn't. I couldn't breathe. And I couldn't see. And I wanted to scream, but I couldn't scream. No, it's not your fault, Dad. It's not your fault that you couldn't scream. None of it is your fault. And I hit him. <laughs> He stumbled backwards. And I heard, I heard a splash. And I, I was so glad. Because he was dead. I was so glad. Because he was dead. Yeah. If I had been here, I would have killed him. And I would have been glad. It's all right. It's all over with. All of this is in the past. Now we can start thinking about the future again. It's okay, sweetheart. It's all right. And it's not your fault. Head. I think it's about time we went home. Yeah. You and I first found all those fan letters that you had saved. I thought you were on the biggest ego trip. I feel so much better now. So I'm going to call the police and fill them in on this. Yeah, just tell them everything we know. Yeah, I will, but more importantly, we don't let Chelsea out of our sight. Oh, yeah, well, when I was three, I took tap, tumbling, and ballet, and I was the lead butterfly in the recital, and I got to wear these gossamer wings Woo! Yeah. and antennas. When I was 12, I was in Miss Annette's class. I was the best jazz class I've ever took, and I was the best dancer. So let's not argue about who the best dancer is, okay? Who's the best dancer? Who's the best dancer? You are yours. You're the best dancer. Who? What? Honey. Honey. Good shot. Here it is. You are famous and you are going to be rich. Alien inhabits baby doll speaks through three-year-old. Oh, that story's nothing. You've got a full three-page spread. Look at this. The doll. Honey, no, 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 no. The, the doll story is obviously a fake. No, no. I, I mean the doll that Alan Michael gave me. Honey, don't be silly. Why would an alien pick your doll to inhabit? Hello? Mom. Mom, I'm not talking about aliens. I'm talking about the prenuptial agreement. Huh? It's on the doll that Alan Michael gave me. hurts the most when you did have something wonderful once upon a time. And you thought you were going to live happily ever after. Yeah. Well, why the hell should I care? It's over. Out with the old.
So, uh, I guess you're free to go now. Free? Well, the, she doesn't need you anymore. She doesn't need your help. You have no idea what you're talking about. You know, I love her, Mr. Spaulding, just as much as you do. And whether I've got a job or not, I'm not going anywhere. by Nancy and David. Be sure to be with us tomorrow for another full hour of Guiding Light.